Hello students, in this presentation we are going to study about tablets. The point we are going to study in our today's presentation include definition, advantages and limits, ideal characteristics as well as pre-formulation aspects associated while formulation of tablets. So let's begin with our presentation. The first is introduction. As you know, pharmaceutical tablets are solid dosage form containing one or more drugs with or without addition of excipients or additives. You know, your tablets are solid dosage form containing drug substances with or without suitable diluents and are prepared either by compressing powders or granules in uh, suitable equipment, right? Then additives or excipients are mainly incorporated to enhance physical appearance, stability, disintegration or breaking up of tablet after administration. Then talking about definition, so according to IP, pharmaceutical tablets are solid, flat or biconvex dishes unit dosage form prepared by compressing a drugs or a mixture of drugs with or without diluents. They vary in shape and differ greatly in size and weight depending on amount of medicinal substance and the intended mode of administration. Officially, your official tablets are circular disc with either flat or concave faces. Okay, now talking about advantages of tablets. Tablets are an effective versatile dosage form that offers the greatest capabilities of all oral dosage forms for the greatest dose precision and the least content variability. Also, tablets are comparatively cheap as compared to other oral dosage forms. They are lighter and compact then they are also easier and cheapest to pack you know different sort of strip and blister packaging can be used for the purpose of packaging of tablets they are easy to administer further they have best combined properties of chemical mechanical and microbiological uh, stability of all the oral forms, their greatest ease of soling and less shelf storage space is required. Then they are also suitable for large scale production. Further, objectionable odor and bitter taste can be masked with the help of coating technique. And they are also simplest dosage form for oral sorry for self administration. In short, we can say that tablet offers advantages like ease of administration, ease to dispense, more stable, accuracy in dose, then whatever your bitter and nauseous substances are there, they can be easily dispensed by masking uh, those respective odor and uh, taste. They are light and compact, then they are economical and even you can get sustained release products with the help of enteric coating. Then talking about some of the limitations which are associated with tablets. Difficulty in swallowing in case of children and unconscious patients. If the patient or the person to whom dose is to be given is unconscious at that time, it is difficult to administer tablets. Further, some of the drug due to their higher amorphous nature and low density are difficult to compress. Further, hygroscopic drugs are not suitable for compressed tablets. Then next is chances of loss of ingredients of tablet during manufacturing may occur because of involvement of several unit of operations and some of the drug they may cause irritation to GIT. Then 
drugs with poor wetting properties and slow dissolution rate are difficult to be dispensed in the form of tablets drugs with objectionable odor and bitter taste substances need some special treatment as we saw in advantages right however this can result into increasing the cost of the product further bioavailability problem may arise due to slow disintegration and slow dissolution of tablets so these are some of the limitations which are associated with that of tablets now let's talk about ideal properties or ideal characteristics of tablet the basic intention or objective behind designing and manufacturing of a compressed tablet is to deliver orally the correct amount of drug in the proper form at or over the period proper time and in the desired location and to have its chemical integrity protected your tablets should be an elegant product and free from all sort of defects which are been associated with tablets it should have strength to withstand the harshness of mechanical shocks that can be encountered in its production packaging shipping handling etc then it must be able to re re release the medicinal agent in the body in a predictable and reproducible manner further it must be uniform in weight and drug content then tablet should be physically and chemically stable so that no alteration in active ingredient with time will occur further it must be of suitable size helping a for ease of administration so these are some of the ideal characteristics of tablet now coming to the next point that is pre formulation aspect of tablets so before developing a formulation studies is required to determine the suitability of the drug and recipients which are going to be used in preparing a formulation so before formulating as the name itself indicate pre formulation before formulation whatever studied are carried out on the active ingredient as well as the recipients which are going to be used along with the active ingredient that is called as pre formulation basically we can define pre formulation as a stage of research and development process where the pre formulation scientist characterizes the physical chemical biopharmaceutical and mechanical properties of new drug substance in order to develop stable safe and effective dosage form that is pre formulation studies are performed in order to develop a safe stable and effective dosage form which are not going to interact either amongst themselves or with our body in ill way or wrong way and they should produce whatever desired effect or for the purpose what they have been taken then the various pre formulation studies that are conducted or that are performed include the first one is organoleptic properties you are aware about organoleptic properties organoleptic properties which include color odor taste etc the drugs should have acceptable odor as well as taste then talking about second that is bulk characterization studies then bulk characterization studies include study of drug for whether it is crystalline in nature whether it is amorphous in nature or whether it is polymorph in nature right so crystalline that is um, crystalline forms have definite ordered internal structure then they are more stable than amorphous form as they have a less internal energy then they have a 
better or uh, less solubility as compared to that of amorphous form and crystalline form has less inclination to change its form during storage whereas for amorphous amorphous forms do not have a fixed or no shaped internal structure then amorphous has a greater thermodynamic energy that is crystalline uh, that as compared to that of your uh, crystalline form and hence they are comparatively lesser stable than crystalline form then amorphous they exhibit a greater solubility than crystalline form and amorphous are more likely to revert to more stable form during storage then talking about polymorphs so when a substance is in more than one crystalline form the various forms are called as polymorphs and the phenomenon is called as polymorphism then the next characteristic which is to be studied prior to formulation include hygroscopicity many drugs exhibit a tendency to absorb moisture the amount of moisture absorbed by a substance is fixed weight of anhydrous sample in equilibrium with the moisture of the air at a given temperature this process depends on relative humidity of the surrounding it is characterized by karl fischer gravimetric or gas chromatography method it is significant as changes in moisture content affects in stability flowability compressibility etc then the next parameter is fine particle characterization certain physical and chemical properties of drug substances are affected by particle size distribution including drug dissolution rate bioavailability content uniformity taste texture color and stability in addition properties such as flow characteristics and sedimentation rates amongst other are also important factors related to particle size therefore it is essential to estimate at early stage as possible that how the particle size of drug substances may affect the formulation as well as our product efficacy knowledge of true and bulk densities of drug substance is very important for forming some idea as to the size of final dosage form would be it can affect flow uh, powder flow properties further the next one that is powder flow properties the flow properties of powder are of very importance for an efficient tablet operation during the pre formulation evaluation of the tablet or for the drug substance its flowability characteristic should be studied for formulation when the anticipated dose of drug is large powder may be free flowing or non free flowing flow properties are affected by change in particle size density shape electrostatic charges and absorbed moisture it is characterized by karsh index hausner's ratio angle of repose rheology etc then the next one is compression properties the compression properties like that of elasticity plasticity then fragment ability are all important for the purpose of selection of suitable formulation ingredient then description so it is possible to observe and on the basis of size shape appearance we can determine physical appearance either visually or sometimes with the help of instrumentation then some more pre formulation studies include solubility analysis you know solubility is an important to study for pre formulation as it is important goal of the pre formulation effort is to devise a method for making solution of the drug a drug must possess 
some aqueous solubility for therapeutic efficacy. Therefore, the various techniques that can be utilized for study include the first one is intrinsic solubility determination. So, in intrinsic solubility determination, all factors that affect the solubility and dissolution should be defined. pKa determination the interrelationship of the dissociation constant lipid solubility and pH at the absorption site and absorption characteristics of various drug are the basis of pH partition theory. Dissociation constant or pKa is usually determined by potentiometric titrations. In partition coefficient, the oil in water or uh, water in oil partition coefficient is measured of molecules lipophilic characteristics that is its preference for the hydrophilic or lipophilic phase. The partition coefficient should be considered in developing a drug substance into a suitable dosage form. If a solute is added to a mixture of two immiscible liquids, it will distribute between the two phases and reach equilibrium at a constant temperature. The distribution of the solute between the two immiscible layer can be described as it is the ratio of unionized drug distributed between the organic and aqueous phase at equilibrium. Your partition coefficient can be determined with the help of shake flask method. Dissolution rate or dissolution studies. The speed or rate at which drug substance dissolve in a medium is called as dissolution rate. Dissolution rate data can be considered when along with drug solubility, dissociation constant and partition coefficient, it can provide an indication of drugs absorption potential following administration. This technique can be useful in predicting probable absorption problem due to dissolution rate. The next, the addition of common ion reduces the solubility of slightly soluble electrolyte coming to stability analysis. In toxicology formulation, it is always advisable to evaluate sample of toxicology preparation for stability and potential homogeneity problems. Then the next one that is solid state stability. The primary objective of solid state stability is to study or to investigate and identify of stable storage condition for drug in the solid state and identification of compatible recipients for the formulation. It can be defined as the capacity of the particular formulation in a specific container or closure system to remain within its physical, chemical, microbiological, therapeutic and toxicological specifications throughout its shelf life. Once the preformulation studied are completed, it is recommended that comprehensive report has to be prepared highlighting the pharmaceutical problems associated with molecule which can be helpful in developing phase 1 formulation. So that's all in our today's video. Next video we will be studying some more important aspects related to that of tablet. Thank you.